from JLo's first relationship with Ben Affleck to her second. How has camping become more expensive? This episode, we're going to talk about the price of camping and some other fun facts between five years ago, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 312 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to national parks and a whole lot more, like Benifer. <laughs> well, this is going to be a really I... fun episode. We've got... <laughs> Uh, we've got a lot of fun facts about uh, camping, and we're going to sort of relate it to pop culture and other things that were happening in the world at the time. But really, we're going to look at uh, how camping affordability has changed dramatically in the last 25 years. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're hoping that this is going to become something we do every single year around this time. You know, we're all getting ready for the start of the camping season, so maybe every year we can look back at what happened five years ago, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago, because five years ago, and we'll get into this in a little bit, we were all so naive. We were. Five years ago was 2019. (laughs) It was just before uh, a pandemic would shake up, not only shake up the world um, and cause a whole lot of terrible things, but it would totally revolutionize not just camping, but all sort of outdoor stuff. It's, It's not just... The camping world that has had an explosion it's also like boating mountain biking skiing just the everything. outdoor industry yeah. in general and what's amazing about this is we will be able to kind of put our own lives into the five years but we were not our viewers 10 years ago or 20 years ago yeah. But someday on episode 2012 <laughs> of the RV Miles podcast, we will get to go back and look 20 years ago. So this is a lot of fun. But before we do that, we have some in the now, now, now present information (laughs) that we have to talk about. And that is the October 9th through the 13th RV Miles Homecoming Rally. It is time, my friends, to put this baby on sale so we can all start making some big plans. So we're very, very excited about this. So tickets for the rally are going to go on sale to Mile Marker members. That is our support membership group of amazing individuals. They are going to have a first pick. That's one of the perks that we offer to Mile Marker members. That is going to open up to them on April 1st. This is not a fool's day joke. It's really <laughs> it's really happening on April 1st. We're going to open up tickets and we thought that it was great to do that then because we have a monthly night live. Our live stream that we do every month with Mile Marker members is going to happen on April 1st as well. So that is going to open up to Mile Marker members on April 1st. Then on April 15th, tax day. I know why did we pick the weirdest like quote unquote holiday. They're the worst. So the both of those days and we're gonna make them better. We're Bye. going to we're definitely going to make tax day better. It's not a day to dread anymore. So on April 15th, tickets are going to open up to the general public. So this rally again is happening October 9th through the 13th. It's really limited space. They're currently holding 65 campsites for our group. We can go all the way up to 80. Yeah. But 65 is where we're starting. Um, a few really fun details. Jay, do you want to list off a few of the highlights that are so far are planned, but there's a lot more coming. So we learned a lot last year and we're going to bring back a lot of the stuff that was, that was really fun. Um, one of my favorite things is we have a uh, show and tell. So everybody, just like in kindergarten, <laughs> everybody uh, brings something if they want to interesting from their rig, a, a tool that's useful, a piece of gear that's useful and chat about it. And we all learned some really wonderful things. Uh, Our laundry was revolutionized <laughs> at that, like literally <laughs> revolutionized. We're going to have a, a cornhole tournament again. Uh, I've, I guess I have 
I guess I have succumbed to calling it cornhole. I used to. I have I, not. I used to. It's it's bags. It's bags. To me. Um, it's bags. It's a bags tournament. We are going to have it is. We had one and it was a lot of fun, but we are going to do it bigger and better this year. We're going to do it earlier this year because it was also a great way for people to meet each other uh, as well. We're going to do a big trivia night again with prizes. We're going to have more prizes this time. And uh, Dave and Sue will be there, of yes. course. Abby's parents, who were the celebrities of they last were. year's homecoming. And, they made so many friends <laughs> that they're still friends with. So even though Dave and Sue were at a hotel, they were non RVers. For those of you who are watching and listening, and we know there are some of you out there who don't have RVs yet, you are welcome at this yeah. event. We had many people who came and stayed in a tent or they stayed in a hotel. And those people, I would say, were living their best RV yeah. life. There's plenty of hotels in the area and uh, it, it, there's a lot of parking on site and you'll be absolutely fine, totally fine. Uh, to do that. We're going to do a live recording of the RV Miles podcast again. We'll probably try to make that a little bit bigger. We won't make it two hours this time, it though. It will be we'll a little really... this time. <laughs> we'll um, get dead set. <laughs> and there will be some some events happening in and around the Amana Colonies area. So if you don't know, the Amana Colonies is sort of like a historic German settlement where they had... Uh, lots of homes and then communal kitchens. Um, but there's wineries and, uh, breweries. And, and breweries and all sorts of stuff. A lot of people think it's an Amish area. It's not. Uh, but it's it's sort of that kind of feel where there's a lot of like old world crafty furniture and um, a lot of historic homes and stuff that you can tour. Uh, but a lot of fun shopping and and uh, you'll get your you'll definitely get some stuff for. Uh, Christmas presents when you're in a manna. And speaking of touring, we are also going to do a rig crawl this year. So this was something actually that Mile Marker members requested, and this was their idea at the live stream back in March. And so what we're going to do is those who want to, it's totally voluntary. You can sign up to let people come and check out your rig, take a little tour, and then we're going to turn it into a crawl. And so what we're going to do, and we're still kind of fleshing out some of the details, is you are, uh, if you would like to participate, you can provide either uh, a drink that's popular, that can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, that's popular for your area. So, you know, if you're from the South, maybe it's like sweet tea, you know, if you want to do something non-alcoholic, or if you're coming from Tennessee, maybe you want to have some bourbon or whatever that is, right? So every time we go to a different location during this crawl, we will also not only get to check out your rig and see what you call home away from home, but we will also get to sample some of the local delicacies that you enjoy back in your area. So I'm very excited about that. I love that the mile markers took a real vested interest in this event. There will also be a trophy for the bags winners. Uh, this is being handled by, I believe, Dave and Michael. It's being handled are, by the folks that won last year. It is. So, um, so they, they're making their own trophy. They think, but they we'll think. See. Well, they they are. I they volunteered to do it. Well, no, I mean whether they the win list. it this year. Well, not, they're, they're not going to the win it. I mean, so, Grin and I are going to win it, but that's a whole other anyway, story. It's a whole lot of fun. We're going to have a, a great time. Uh, we provide dinner each night and have a big communal dinner together it's uh, all the events are indoors uh so it, it's a big building that we can open these big barn doors on so if it's nice out we can open those if it's not we can close it up so uh, it, it goes rain or shine and uh, we'll have a blast so we hope that you will come yes so again october 9th through the 13th and tickets are going to go on sale to mile marker members on april 1st if you would like to become a mile marker member prior to that to get on the list head over to rvmiles.com slash mile markers to learn more about that membership. Otherwise, it opens up to the general public on April 15th. And the very best way to make sure that you get that correct date so that you can get your ticket is by joining our mailing list. That is how this is all going to get distributed on April 15th to the general public. So you can sign up for the mailing list at rvmiles.com slash mailing list so that you can secure your space. We should mention too that the Amana RV Resort where we are hosting this event, they are amazing there. They are giving us a rally rate of $35 a night for full hookups. 
Good deal. That's a really super good deal. As you will find as we continue with this episode, that's a good deal. That's a very good deal. So again, (laughs) rvmails.com slash mailing list to get on the mailing list to join the April 1st general public opening of tickets or rvmails.com slash mile markers to become a mile marker supporter and be a part of that April 1st mile marker first dibs opening. All right. We're going to talk here on this episode about the last 20 years in RV. Uh, what we really want to cover is the change in the cost uh, of, of RVing, a little bit about the change in the amount of people that do it and and some other sort of touchstones that we can sort of center this discussion around. So let's start back 20 years ago and, and look at the price of a Jayco Red Hawk. Okay, can we just take a minute? Yeah. 20 years ago was 2004. That was the year I graduated from college. It really wasn't that long ago, right? No, it, it wasn't. I mean, 20 years ago actually should be like 1982, but apparently that's that's not how time works. So, so note to selves, maybe when we do yeah. this next year, we should include like 5, 10, 20, 40. Yeah. But... The internet. <laughs> the internet. I, the internet has a shelf life of what, at least, you know, going forward, it should be fine. But there's stuff that you, and there's this thing called the Wayback Machine. Have you ever heard of the Wayback the Machine? The Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine is a, uh, it's a website where they take snapshots of websites, uh, uh, you know, across the internet and save them. So <laughs> like stuff <MySpace>. gets, <laughs> stuff gets saved <laughs> on the internet for time immemorial. But yes, it does. The nineties didn't yes. have as much internet. So. As I learned this week in the mile markers, yeah. Facebook group. Nothing stays <laughs> hidden. If you bring it up, they will find it. <laughs> so I wanted to take a look at a. I wanted to just take a look at an RV that is something that is sort of like a, a, a good standard bearer and something that I could find the price for, dating back twenty years ago. So the Jayco Red Hawk is sort of a middle of the road in terms of price. Uh, I think motorhome. Okay. So you know, obviously, you've got your big Class A motorhomes that are going to be in the several hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, but this is going to be sort of more the common family motor home that you might find out there. So we're going to take a look at that over time, but let's start back 20 years ago, 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago, 2004, 20, 2004. We were was, just babies. We were barely alive in 2000. It was the year Facebook was launched. Oh my God. It was the year that Martha Stewart went to prison. And look what prison did for her. She now has a master class. <laughs> it was the year that the movie The Incredibles was released. Oh, and they just released the sequel like two years ago, three years ago. The, uh, the, bo- no, <laughs> it's been more. A year? Four years? <laughs> Incredibles, Incredibles 2. two. Incredibles. When did that come out? <laughs> it's probably been 15 years. No, it has not. You need to look that up right now because when that came out, I was sort of like, haven't Holly Hunter and uh, the coach, like, haven't they? Oh my gosh, you're right. I had no idea. Oh, 2018, this six years ago. Knows, huh? It was 20, I thought it was, okay. I thought it was much no, further. No, because the gap between one and two <laughs> was, was beat. Yeah. Jack Jack is a teenager. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it was the year that the Boston Red Sox won the World Series, the, the infamous bloody sock. But we and, were all still waiting for the Cubs. It's going to be uh, a little bit longer. Yeah. And it was the year of the Friends finale. Oh, my gosh. Right. Ross and Rachel, finally. <laughs> oh, my so, gosh. So finally. when someone says 2004, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it it was a long time ago. Um, when did you join Facebook officially? Oh, it well, so when did you uh, finally say MySpace, you're dead to me? Those first few years, it was just for uh, college. college students. Yes, and, which they didn't. <laughs> we had just missed that having left yeah. Columbia. So I, I, I think it was probably like 2006 or something. Like it was that. 2008 for me. Jack was yeah. uh, like six months old. Yeah, I, and I, mean, I, we I was, to- I was like super into Farmville. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> it might have been later. It might have been after we were together. Um, that, that I finally oh joined God. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I so, joined Jack was a baby and that was basically how I started sharing photos of Jack. Back then the MSRP for a Jayco Red Hawk class C motor home was $70,714 oh for a motor home class C. Yeah. For, I mean, there are some of, that are in that price range now, right? but, but the Jayco, but this, this you, 
you definitely will get to that. You're not going to find it for that. I bet that today. thing had so many swoops and swirls <laughs> and the entire interior is just probably brown, <laughs> brown everywhere. So rolling forward another 10 years, 2014, this is okay. the year of the big Ebola outbreak. It was the year that Kim and Kanye got married. Oh, I, where were you when that <laughs> happened? I'll tell you. <laughs> the the ALS uh, ice bucket challenge went viral. You remember oh the gosh. ice bucket challenge? Yes, we have a video of Jack, little Jack mm-hmm. and little Ethan doing the ice bucket challenge. And they did it in, in the tub. The uh, the movie Frozen came out. Oh, and the world changed forever. Uh, yeah. And uh, Jimmy Fallon took over The Tonight Show in 2014. <sighs> Oof. It seems wow. like it was longer than that, but it does, it? doesn't it? It's been a yeah. hard couple years for Jimmy Fallon, so it does seem like <laughs> it has. So Jayco Redhawk in twenty fourteen, ten years later, okay. went up from seventy thousand seven hundred dollars to ninety nine thousand two hundred and thirty five dollars. Okay, so a twenty nine thousand dollar jump in ten years. Yeah. Now okay. adjusted okay. for inflation though. It should have only gone up to $89,000. So it Ooh. actually increased a decent amount in those 10 years. What's going on over it, there, Jacob? It, 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 it beat inflation by a decent amount. They were yeah. like, how can we raise the price on this? But 100000 is too much. But how, how can we get as close as possible to that? 99000 999 and 99 cents. And moving <laughs> forward another five years now. So we're just going to go back five years from today to 2019. 2019. We were so naive, oh, not was, knowing what was coming, right? It was such a different time. Although for us, 2019 was quite a year. It was a big year. It was for a big us. year for us. It was the year that I had brain surgery, which yes. was quite the thing. And it uh, was also the year that we officially moved out of. So before we get into 2019 uh-huh. social stats, let's do RV Miles stats. So 2019 was the year that we sold Bussy yeah. and moved out of Bussy and moved into Ranger Gandalf. Traley the second. Yes. I, I Ranger Gandalf Traley the second. Uh, the, our Heartland Pioneer trailer. Yes. And we we were having uh, quite the journey and we were, we were on that big North Dakota we were, adventure. We were going to all, all these North Dakota yes. state parks. It was great. And we were going to um, speak at um, our first FMCA international event yeah and that's uh, when i developed a brain infection and yes i'd have brain surgery in north dakota and then spent the next several months uh on some pretty heavy duty antibiotics before i got the plate put back in my head the following uh early, early the following January, year yeah. and then we hit the road again <laughs> and <laughs> got there down to arizona only to have a pandemic hit and shut everything down it was really the first place we went we were is like, where we stayed for the next many weeks <laughs> been there done that being isolated because yeah. of a medical crisis so but 2019 is the year of the big brexit debate it oh. would actually happen in january of 2020 mm. if you remember of course that was another weird thing right before uh, the pandemic Scientists released the first ever image of a black hole. That was amazing. We had both Baby Shark and Baby Yoda that year. So big year. <laughs> such a big year. <laughs> baby Shark, fine. The day the the Baby Yoda came into the world, what? I will never forget where I was when I saw Baby Yoda for the first time. Do you remember where you were when you saw Baby Yoda for the first uh, no, time? I, I, I don't have this deep deep connection with i know Grogu, i'm sorry like i the rest how the dare you how dare you his name is baby yoda <laughs> don't use that name we were on an amtrak train headed to chicago you and i were taking our weekend mm. it was november yeah we had just gotten back into uh back from north dakota and so we were gonna take an anniversary trip and your parents kept the kids, and you and I took the train to Chicago for just two nights. And on the way up there, we watched several episodes of The Mandalorian. I hadn't seen it yet, and you really wanted me to watch it. And that That's is right. when Baby Yoda, right. his little pod opened, and Babby was there, and it was, yes, 2019, so special. It was also the year <laughs> of Avengers Endgame. So all of those Avengers movies wrapped up finally in 2019 and then there was the big celebrity college admissions scandal you remember that um 
It was, Aunt Becky. <laughs> Ooh, Aunt Becky. It was, it was a big year. Yeah. So in 2019, a Jayco Red Hawk went for $111,800. Oh, wow. So in five years, it only jumped about $12,800. Yeah. So actually, 000. it actually adjusted for inflation. It got, it kind of came back down a little bit. Um, it was still above what it, the inflation increase from 20, 2004. Uh, those 15 years, but much closer. So adjusted for inf- inflation from 2004, it should have been 96,000. So, mm. so significantly closer. Those right? are a lot of numbers. I can't keep that all straight. Yeah. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you ready for the big one though? This year? <laughs> all right. Here it is. 2024. We have now, uh, we are coming out the other end of the giant boom in RVing. Um, what is this Jayco now selling for? One hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars. Shut the front door. One hundred and sixty-eight thousand oh dollars. That is more than double what it went for seventy thousand dollars twenty years ago. And the average median household income right now is what? The average medium household income today is is somewhere close to $70,000. So household income has doubled where the cost of a Jayco Red Hawk has two and a half timed. Uh, so wow. it should, a Jayco Red Hawk with, inf- with inflation, and obviously inflation has been huge, right? Inflation yeah. is big, including the big rise in inflation recently. A Jayco Red Hawk should be $118,000 today. Mm, mm. Mm. 160. Now, again, remember, these are the MSRPs. Yeah. So this is not what you will probably see on the dealer. Generally, you're going to see about 30% less than that. Um, Yeah. You'll, you'll, well, you'll see on the tag, maybe 20% less than that. And maybe you'll strike a deal to pay somewhere around 30% less than that. But that's been pretty consistent over time, except for that little blip. In 2021 and 2022, mainly where people were paying close to MSRP, if not more. Yeah, that is a huge jump in 20 years for this Jayco Red Hawk. All right. Yeah. So this probably means we're going to see something very similar when we get into the 5, 10, 20 of camping. So the cost of camping, we all know, has gone up over time. But how much? Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit BlueOx.com. Get ready to use your outside voice. Whether you're camping at a local state park, driving cross-country to a music festival, or just want to try out the RV life before you buy, the adventure begins as soon as you step inside your RV share rental. Choose from thousands of options, including pet-friendly RVs and RVs that can be delivered right to your campsite. Each booking on RV Share also includes 24-7 roadside assistance for the ultimate peace of mind on the open road. With a wide-ranging inventory from affordable pop-up campers to luxury motorhomes, RV Share has a rental that is perfect for you. Book your RV now for the solar eclipse this April. There is still availability near the path of totality, and make sure to check out RV Share's Total Solar Eclipse RV Guide. Use promo code RVMILES30 for $30 off a $500 rental or more at RVShare.com. That's RVMILES30 for $30 off $500 at RVShare.com. So let's start with state parks. Now, the one place I was able to find the actual prices of state parks, I figured I'd choose a good Midwestern state um, and find one that I could find the actual prices listed over time over the past 20 years. So let's go the other direction with these. So today in the state of Ohio, a state park is $50 for a full hookup campsite. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, that's that's decently costly. Um, We've seen more, we've seen less, Mm -hmm. 
but I think you'll see is, less if you come to homecoming in October 9th through the 13th. Just uh, saying. So this is, and this is the most expensive state park in Ohio too. So I stuck with the same state park the whole time. Uh, but they're, they do have different prices in Ohio at different parks. Okay. okay. So the most expensive night at a state park is $50 for full hookups in the state of Ohio. Five years ago, 2019, mm -hmm. it was $43. So okay. it hasn't increased that much. I mean, not inflation, as okay. we saw with the motorhome <laughs> yeah. in the last five years, I, it was a big jump. But can I tell you, I think the difference in mindset in 2019, paying $43 yeah. at a state park it would have been like me being like, yeah, us. yeah, it would have been me being like, yeah. no, hi, not happening. $50 now in a state park in 2024. I mean, that was just my reaction a second ago. Oh, okay. Full hookups, 50 bucks a night in a state park. Sure. That's a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now if we go back to 2014 though, 2014, it was $39. In the five years between 2014 and 2019, it jumped $4. And in the five years between 29, uh, 2019 and today, it jumped uh, $7. So not... Not huge jumps, but it jumped a little bit jumped, more. Jumped. But back in 2004, oh boy. an Ohio State Park, the most expensive night at an Ohio State Park was $25 for a full oh, hookup campground. My kingdom. Yeah. So it's exactly doubled in 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's so it, 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 has been, it has ridden right in line with inflation. Do you think sense. in 20 years... It's going to be a hundred dollars. It's very possible, but hopefully, Don't say that. hopefully in twenty years, though, if it's a hundred dollars, we'll be making you know a hundred and fifty thousand dollar median household income. I mean this, but this falls a little bit, yeah. you know, with what I talked about. I don't know yeah. if it was last episode or the episode before about New Mexico, about our state parks, yeah. like getting to a price point. Now, of course, this is full hookups. I'm yeah. sure it's it is cheaper, cheaper for, for water electric mm -hmm. and. What not, but you know, this is that concern that the state parks, which should be accessible for all, become price points in which the average household income, even at seventy thousand dollars a year, with inflation the way it is right now, that that household is struggling and fifty dollars a night to camp is expensive. Yeah. yeah. So that's state parks, but what about RV parks? So I wanted oh to look at a an RV park that I've been to, and it's been a very long time since I've I've, I've been here. I was here as a child, <laughs> but I wanted to, again pick something that's sort of like in the middle of the country, um, something that's not in a place where the real estate's really expensive. Um, so I chose the Jellystone Park in Eureka, Missouri. When were you at a Jellystone in Eureka? I stayed there as a kid with my family when we went to visit. This is right by, it's right next to the Six Flags Amusement Park in Eureka, which is okay. so, so about an hour outside of St. Louis. So it's a good spot to like visit St. Louis from. So we went to St. Louis when I was a kid, probably every other year or so. You have such um, a love for St. Louis. I do. I do. It was, you know, we we would often go to Chicago or St. Louis. Those were kind of our vacations when I was a kid. And uh and one year we went camping at this uh Jellystone Park, which was uh which was a whole lot of fun. I remember being just uh, just a blast even even back then. This would have been in the early nineties. But, um, this park is, uh, you know, again, a, je a jellystone. It's a, it's a chain of campgrounds, right? So they're mostly independently owned, but I just thought this would be a good, a good park to use as a, a, a base for campground prices. Also, again, I could find all the rates going back 20 years on the internet. Well, yeah, I think the <laughs> private campground this is a safe bet to look at something yeah. like a jellystone or a yeah. koa because yeah. you're going to be able to find that well, information they actually had a website back then if you don't remember uh when we started rving full-time in 2016 there was still a, a good amount of rv parks that didn't have websites yet gosh i would really i wish i had thought to before they passed ask my grandpa or my grandma who used to RV all the time through the nineties. Yeah. How did you have to call? Yeah. And then how did you, well, but how did you 
know who to cut. This sounds so. That, that giant, How did you know that there was a Jellystone in Eureka Springs? Why, did you that, open up the, the phone book? That giant uh, Good Sam guide of, of campgrounds was a really big deal. Yeah. It, I and, guess and then, so, of course, yeah. all the different states, like, you know, back, we talked about this on an episode or two ago where you used to, uh, you could call and the state tourism board would send you all sorts of brochures and a camping guide. You can still get all that sort of stuff, but like that was a big way you found these places. You have, yeah. have a listing that was one sentence long and you call the phone number on it. I mean, listen to me, my little newborn Gen, Gen X are over here that's like, oh, how did you do it? Did you... <laughs> I barely remember MapQuest. I mean, you went to college in this I, era, so let's. <laughs> I didn't. I, I mean, I went to college in the 2000s. I wasn't camping and certainly I wasn't. Yeah. traveling i'm you know but there i mean you the early 2000s we weren't spending much time on the internet right no yeah. but really i mean even by the time i started traveling internationally like it, yeah. any of that trips those trips to hong kong or to tokyo any any yeah. of that by that time it was all just like research on the yeah. internet i yeah. mean i i have no idea how people planned trips in the 90s i don't know how my parents did it how did they know where to stop <laughs> my dad was telling us about because we i just got back from i talk about this in my fresh tank uh, i just got back from a ski trip to jackson hole wyoming and he, he when he was 16 years old his parents let him go on a road trip with his friend who was also 16. Oh boy. All the way to California from here wow. from Illinois to California to visit it was to visit his friend's grandmother, which is so cute and quaint. That's very cute. But also they, you know, they went across the country and had a had a great time. I and, got to do something like that when I was 16. Oh, I I didn't do anything like that when I was 16. My did did it work out okay for your dad? Oh, they had a they they had car trouble. They had all sorts of issues, but they, yeah, they we did, did it, too. Right. You know, they did it. I, when I was 16, uh, maybe 17, 16 or 17, uh, we took a road trip. So this actually would have been the 90s. Uh, we took a road trip to, from Kansas City up to Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was me, uh, my best friend, Brooke, my best friend, Jenny, which yeah. some of you met Jen at homecoming last year. She'll be there again this year. And then our friend, Matt. And the four of us, Brooke was driving. Whoa. That should, I know, Jason knows Brooke. She's, a, should, <laughs> she's a two-pedal driver. She's a two-pedal driver. Steps on the brake with the left uh, foot. Brooke was driving. It was like, <laughs> just remember when she made Jack throw open the car? Uh, <laughs> and we got into a car accident. <laughs> well, that's there. not shocking at all. And what happened was we uh, were screwed. <laughs> we didn't even have a radio in the actual car. It was this old, old car of hers. We didn't even have a radio in it. And so we had a boombox. We had like, <laughs> we were playing. And uh, somebody, somebody decided that they needed to, I, I'm trying to remember how this whole story, I don't know. It was involving the music. The next thing I know, uh, we are just rotating in a circle, spinning down the median uh, in, in the grass this. between the two highways. Whoa. And the car is just spinning and sliding because we had been screwing with the boombox to have music. I mean, I'm sure Brooke needed some Barbara Streisand played stat. This is the only car wreck ever that was caused by an attempt to play Barbara Streisand music. <laughs> Probably. And so uh, we had it had to go to a shop. Did anyone have a cell phone? <gasps> or like maybe you had a pager. Mm, I would have had a pager yeah. for sure. Yeah. So at least you had a little bit of communication. Um, her car never really drove the same after that. There was always a little, little bit of, I think the um, alignment was always forever off. You think? <laughs> <laughs> but they were able to get us back on the road. We made it up to Minneapolis but, but, into our friend Stephanie's house. And we stayed there for the whole week, had a great time and drove the car back without any problems. I'm sure we put a I, yeah, I, I just can't, I can't imagine, imagine. I can't imagine sending Jack out on a trip like that. Right I now. can't imagine my parents getting the phone call. I think I called and told them. I know Brooke obviously had to call her parents because we needed somebody <laughs> to pay for the repairs. Um, and then I'm sure that information got spread out. We really downplayed it. I think to this day, Brooke will probably go to her grave saying that somebody else caused that accident. Like another car yeah. was like trying to get in our lane or something. I I will finally come clean and say. This was, we a hundred percent caused this accident. The four of us did something, and it had something to do with music. 
and we caused that accident. Wow. So, uh, no, wow. I Real confessions. I, no, right? Like I, my, wow, I'm telling dad, you about the theater, and now I'm telling you about this. When my dad went on this trip, it would have been like 1973. Yeah. You know, so I mean, there's there's no map quest. There's no cell cell phones. You're stopping in gas stations to use pay phones and stuff like that. I, Can you imagine today no. with cell phones and everything sending Jack on a trip like that? Having I, been I, full-time RVer, having been an RVer for 8 years now, I cannot imagine. So the Jellystone in Eureka, Missouri, today the highest rate in the summer and the, the the busiest season for a full hookup campsite is eighty six ninety five. Okay. Okay. So that's I I that's, that's, from what we've seen at RV parks across the country, that's probably right in the middle there with most of the resort type places that have pools and amenities and and stuff yeah. like that. You want to go to the exciting town of Eureka Springs? And pay eighty six. Yeah, I mean it's it is like again it's right next door to the amusement park, so it's it's. It, it, it's you, you're paying flags. a little bit of premium there. Again, it's Missouri, though, so it's not like you're right on the coast or something where real estate is very expensive. So we've certainly seen campgrounds that are in the 120 plus range, and we've, we've certainly that. seen RV parks that are nicer than this place that are cheaper. But it's I think this is a good choice for a, a median. Um, so today, eighty six ninety five. Five years ago, sixty four ninety five. Wow. So we're seeing a $22 20? difference okay. in five years. Okay. That's a big jump. Yes, it is. Because five years prior to that, fifty four ninety five. So $10 jump in those five years, $22 jump in the last five years. Mm. And way back in the year 2004, forty two ninety five. Forty two ninety five. Yeah. So it is more than doubled. Forty two ninety five for full hookup campground twenty years ago at a Jellystone. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. RV Miles is sponsored by Harvest Hosts. Harvest Hosts is a membership that allows RVers to take a rest from the road and enjoy unlimited overnight stays at over 5,100 unique locations in North America. Breweries, farms, attractions, wineries, and more. Want to check out the 2024 solar eclipse on April 8th, but don't have a place to stay? Harvest Host has over 500 locations in the path of totality. Easily plan and book your next RV trip and enjoy over $1,500 in exclusive member benefits by joining Harvest Host. Get 15% off your first year of membership with the code MILES. That's M-I-L-E-S. Go to HarvestHost.com to become a Harvest Host member today. Now, something else, a big price. So these are sort of the big costs that are involved with RVing and camping. Yeah. So we've got the cost of the RV itself, the cost of the campgrounds, and then you've got the cost of fuel. The cost of fuel. Oh, is, look, do we have to do this? Do we, we, do we really have to do this? Oh my well, gosh! I think I think it might surprise some people. Okay, right? I mean, obviously, fuel is expensive. You know, we, we, yeah. it, it's increased over time, and, and we all know that. Uh, today, the average gallon of gas across the country is three dollars and thirty nine cents. This is the average. This is. I feel like I need to talk about this for a second yeah. because this comes up every news. Video. Yeah, every time I talk about gas prices, they're like, you're then, wrong, it's this price. This, and I'm like, but that's where it is where you are. Yeah, we need to talk about what an average means. <laughs> Do we? The, I mean, <laughs> or I need people to look it up. We are When when someone says this is the average across a wide yeah. spectrum, we have taken all of the amounts from all over the country and put them all together, and we have averaged it out. That is not someone saying or trying to argue that that is not what you are paying at home. Yeah. Be that more or less. It is just the average. And time and time and time again, people leave these comments and they say that you're wrong. I'm paying it's, 425. It's also a blink yes. in time, right? It's going to change the next day and it's going to, you know, it, it is, it's going to go up for some, it's going to go down for others. <laughs> every month, uh, every every day, it goes up for some and goes down for others. It's so, so fluid. And no one wants to argue yeah. that that's what you're paying. But we're just talking about the average. There's no way, you know, people can't sit and list. Currently in Los Angeles, yeah. California, you're paying this. However, in 
uh, Eureka Springs, Missouri, you're paying. We can't do that. Right. Like you have to have these averages. I, there was a time where I was doing like of these states have had the highest jumps and these states have had the it, highest drops and it's I, just too much. Math stinks. Trust me. <laughs> I don't like math either. <laughs> but the basic average is is not a way to to dispute what you're paying. Yeah. So the average right now across all the country is what a regular gallon of gasoline is 339 uh countrywide and 403 for a gallon of diesel okay five years ago two dollars and 60 cents for a gallon of gasoline uh so that's about a uh 60 70 cent jump okay and three dollars and five cents for a gallon of diesel about a dollar jump okay 10 years ago 336. This is our first real variance here. So 10 years ago, $3.36 for a gallon of gasoline. So gasoline is only three cents higher right now than it was 10 years ago. And Uh, and a gallon of diesel was only 382. So a gallon of diesel was much closer to gasoline. 2004. But but (laughs) but back in 2004, the year of our Lord Britney Spears. been 20 years since Brit Brit. Oh, it was man. Like her okay. big, that was a year of her big, she had a big tour that year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I am, oh, I am aware. Dollar 85 for a gallon of gasoline. Wow. Dollar 85. Wow. Good I, deal. Good. <laughs> man, such a good deal. Of course, Americans were making half as much though. Yeah. So if you double a dollar 85, Gas prices have actually beat inflation is the only thing among these things we've talked about that has dramatically actually beat inflation. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, people get really mad and like to talk politics a lot over gas prices and stuff. And I think there are all these other important things. There are all these other things that cost a lot of money mm-hmm. um, that affect us a little bit more. But um, yeah, I gas, would gas love to look at, and this is not the podcast for it, but I would love to look the 5, 10, 20 of a gallon of milk and yeah. a loaf of bread. Yeah. Because, Sara Lee, I don't know what you think you're baking, <laughs> but like your bread has gotten very expensive. And I just can't understand that because it's still the same recipe from probably 20 years ago. But here's the here's the real big one, though. Uh, um, a gallon of diesel. Back in two thousand and four, yeah, was a dollar eighty one. It was cheaper. It was cheaper than gasoline. So diesel has not beat inflation. No, (laughs) and of course, a lot of RVers are running diesel. Whether you're in a big motorhome or you're you're driving a heavy duty truck that's a diesel. So so that has not been great for you. Uh, Diesel is still quite expensive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, so that's the cost of of traveling that's the cost of rving uh over time. yeah it's clearly it's it's bad it's it's been worse than inflation it's really um state parks and gas prices i think a little bit better than we might have thought but everything else has been more expensive of the course the got- price for sure yeah. is probably the most shocking or most glaring yes. number in all of this and of course there's all the you know there's food costs and everything else involved with traveling entertainment yeah. costs all that has gotten more expensive what'll um, be really fascinating as we do this over the coming yeah. years is we're going to be starting to look into these 5 year numbers are going to be really early pandemic numbers yeah. 2020 i'm going to be really curious to see what 2015 up against 2020, yeah. 2016 up against 2021 is going to start to look like. Yeah. That's going to be really fascinating. Yeah. There's one more thing that I thought we should look at uh, when we cover the sort of numbers in these, in these okay. different periods. And this isn't a cost factor, but I think this is a good sort of gauge of outdoor recreation. I thought we should look at the number of visitations to national parks, because this is something that they track very well and they have records dating back, you know, decades. So last year, should we do this as a game? We could, where I have to try to guess sure. the number. Sure. So I'll okay. give you last year's. Just give number. me last year's. Okay. So last year's. No, you don't look at the screen. Oh, though. okay. That's, okay. That would be oh, that would that's... ruin a game. If oh, you want to do a game, don't look at the answers. So you're okay. telling me oh. I can't 
cheat. No. Oh, uh, so, well, then I don't want to play this game. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the computer. Okay. 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 So last year, uh, of course, this is 2024. We don't have 2024 numbers yet. Right. It's not the end of the year. But last year, there were 325 million visits to national parks. Oh, my gosh. That's okay. almost as many people are in this country. About a third of a billion visits to national parks last year. Okay. So, uh, you know, we know national parks have been very busy. There's been lots of talk about how overrun national parks are and how big of a challenge it is to manage national parks with all the people that are interested in national parks these days. Right. Five years ago, 2019, how many people visited a national park? Okay, so I have to do some math on this a little bit. So we know that by 2016, uh, attendance was starting to rise because that was the 100th anniversary mm-hmm. of the National Park Service. Yes. So we know that that was, we started to see quite a big jump. Yeah. 2019. So we're still talking the pre pandemic uh-huh. numbers. Uh-huh. I am going to, <laughs> God, I have no idea, uh, 220 million people. 327 oh, wow. million people. We only added like, no, it has dropped. There were more visits Wait, to national parks in 2019 than there were in 2023. In fact, 2016 is still the record holder for the highest number of visits in a year. Why are you'd know that if you watched the last news video? <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew 2016 was a record number. It, 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 I didn't yes, realize it, that it it's... went down after that, actually. So 2016, the National Park Service had a big oh. push for the 100th anniversary. There's lots of advertisement and stuff that went out. That Boy. was the big there. And, and it is sort of it was very successful. Um, visitation hasn't gone down dramatically if by only. any means, but it's only it is is pretty much held at that same level. If only there was a place I could go to get this kind of news. If only. If so, only. And then I would have guessed I would have yeah. been a winner. And I could take this kind of information to Jeopardy, to who wants to be a millionaire. Although that's like on an island now and it looks like a survivor. So I'm it's, out. So what do you think for 2014, 10 years ago, 2014? I will tell you. 220. I will tell you. 221. Your, no, I will tell you your guess of the 220 a number is too low. Oh my gosh, it's too low yeah. for 2014. Okay, um, I will say 297, 297 million. Oh, it was 292 million. So you're very oh, close. So I can learn. So national park visitation has gone up about like 32 million visits or so. Okay, um, over the course of, of that time. So you know, 10 percent ish. Wow. Not not wow. not that much, right? Uh, it's still a decent amount, and it's yeah, still but... uh, a challenge for for a lot of the folks that manage these places. Yeah, I mean, I would love yeah. to look at the numbers up against like yeah. funding, personnel, all of that yeah. with the numbers. Okay. And then back in 2004, where do you think we're at? 2004. Okay. Um, so it was 292 in uh-huh. 2014. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to say 261. 276 million. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. We all have loved parks for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. The parks have been busy, um, but uh, about a 50 million jump from wow. from 20 years ago to now, which. You and know, they all went to Yellowstone Yosemite in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> well, that's that's part of the issue, right? And that is yes. that, that. So, that this is not a really good example of the visitation at the busiest parks mm-hmm. because some of those have doubled, right? Some yeah. of those have really, because we, you're, these people aren't evenly going yeah, to all of the parks across out. the nation. So you'll see parks like Great Smoky Mountains, which is the busiest park and the Grand Canyon and Yosemite and Yellowstone have had dramatic increases in visitation yeah. because those are the most popular places that people want to go to. So uh, I think those numbers are really eye-opening and interesting. Let us know what you think about uh, a segment like this, because I thought it was a lot of fun and, you know, also a little frustrating to to know how much camping costs, because the reason a lot of us camp is it's supposed to be an affordable thing to do. And even if you're a tent camper, you don't buy a big expensive RV, you have a 
cheap used RV, you have something that's 20 years old, something like that, you're still dealing with the costs of campgrounds and and availability of campgrounds. And he, we have a lot of uh, new RVers like us where maybe the data only fits for 2019, but I know that there's a lot of seasoned RVers out there too. And if you have some recollection even further past 2004, if you have some ideas of what you know, maybe you or even family members were paying in the 90s, leave that down in the comments too, or drop that over on the RV Miles Facebook group because I am super curious as to what some of the price points were in the 90s, even into the 80s too. Yeah. Did you know that eTrailer.com is focused on putting actual hands on the products they sell? That allows the representatives to see, touch, and know exactly what it is like to use the product they're providing you with quality service and recommendations based on personal experience. If you're looking for a one-stop shop, eTrailer.com has you covered with a variety of RV items, including towing options, interior accessories, replacement parts, storage, and more. Have you ever wondered where you can find some of the odd parts for your RV online? eTrailer.com is where you do it. Visit RVMiles.com slash eTrailer and receive free shipping on orders over $99. That's RVMiles.com slash eTrailer. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. Real mattresses shipped to you through the mail with springs in them and everything that fit the size and shape of most RVs. If you've got an RV King or an RV Queen, or you got some odd bunk sizes, you got an odd thickness that you need to deal with, a slide closing over the top of the bed, you can sort all that stuff out if you purchase a mattress from RVMattress.com. By Brooklyn Bedding. Their mattresses are made in their factory in Arizona, shipped to you right at the campground or at home, wherever you want it to go. You just unroll them, let them expand. They're toxin free. They have a 120 night sleep trial, so you can return the mattress if it doesn't work out for you and more. For this month only, you get 30% off. That's an increase of our normal 25% off. You get 30% off if you visit rvmattress.com slash RV miles to get you geared up for the camping season. RVmattress.com slash RV miles for 30% off your next mattress purchase. Upgrade that awful mattress in your RV. Your night's sleep is definitely worth it. Okay, so I think now it's time to check the level of our tanks. And of course, our tanks are sponsored by our friends over at Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the no BS toilet treatment. You can find them over at liquefiedrv.com. All right, Jay. What is in your black tank this week? Uh, My black tank is going to be air travel this week. Um, As you know, uh, I talked about it earlier. I just got back from a a ski trip with my dad and my brother to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It was a a blast. And spoiler alert, it's going to be my fresh tank. But (laughs) there is a reason we love RVing. You and I have been doing a lot of air travel recently. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm... I deal with it probably a little bit better than you. Oh, that is not in debate. You definitely <laughs> deal with it better than I do. But gosh, how I don't listen in this. Okay. I'm not the first to come up with this, <laughs> this year. Uh, how do the airlines get away with making the seating so small? Yeah. I don't understand. I, I, and it's, and it's not about, yeah, Americans are getting bigger and everything. And w- it's not about width. It's about where my knees go. Yeah, you're six two. That's yeah. not going to change and no I, matter what size I'm you weigh. I'm tall, play. but I'm not. I'm not super tall. Yeah. Can you imagine our six four son? Yeah. To fly, he'd be so miserable. Uh, it, it's it's really rough for people, uh, especially when somebody leans their seat back and all that sort of stuff. It, yeah. Like I could, I thought I was going to work on our flights. Um, you know, it's a long way out there. I couldn't even open my laptop far enough to see the screen. And we're not talking Spirit. Or, United. Yeah, I, can, on I, United I, I, I can't fly Spirit again. I, I did that 15 years ago or something. I, I had the row to myself, the entire row to myself on a Spirit flight. And it was still the most uncomfortable flight I've ever been on in my life. That flight back from Tampa in January on Southwest, I can't ever fly Southwest Again, I flew Southwest all year last year with Henry to go back and forth to Chicago, wherever we were on the West Coast. And then that flight back from Tampa in January. I, it's well documented that I live with anxiety. I deal with anxiety every day. My anxiety is escalated to a point where I need to be uh, 
well medicated in one way or another uh, when we fly because it's just it's really intense yeah. and that's I, I used to always awful. go for the uh, the you know like the exit row seats because you had more leg room there but now they charge more for that mm -hmm. right and they charge significantly more but I'm at the point now where I, I just have to pay for upgraded seating whether that's the you know economy plus or whatever yeah it's it's really rough and it has just the amount of flying that we have done this year alone for RV shows and for work has really made me appreciate even more uh, RV travel and the freedom of that and how much more comfortable it can be uh, when it comes to flying because it is not realistic. The cost of airline flights right now, it is not realistic for the average person to book a first class, business class, economy plus Oh my God, you seat. first class is insane. It is. It's unbelievable how much it costs. And, you know, at the same time, it's the only comfortable way to fly if you're going to be flying for four, five, six hours. And it's not that comfortable. It's no. just like what normal should be, right? You it know? is what normal should be. We're paying exuberant amounts. Like, I don't need, normal. like, I don't need you to feed me food and serve me I'll and give me the free wine though. and all that stuff. Oh. Just, I just need the bigger seat. Just I need the, give me the bigger seat. I need the anxiety. Call me. I, I can get Drink. that. I can get that right before I get on the flight. That's, That's true. That I can pay true. seventeen dollars for a drink in the airport. Oh my goodness! All right, what's in your fresh tank? My fresh tank is the town of Jackson Hole, uh, which is just or just Jackson. Just I wonderful. looked this up. Did you know the Jackson? Like I had to look this up, yeah. but they it's interchangeable. Yeah, but yeah, whatever you want to call it, Jackson, Wyoming is a it's a really cool mountain town that you as an RVer can visit in the the warmer weather. It's a great place. It is it is essentially right next to Grand Teton National Park. In fact, the planes the the airport is essentially in the national park. You, my dad and I, uh, got to drive into Grand Tetons. Nobody else there. I mean, there's a there was one parking area where a lot of people parked that were cross country skiing through through the park oh, or cool. snowshoeing. But actually, then that was right at the entrance. But actually, driving deep into the park, we we drove the whole way. Uh, we we rarely saw another car, and we had some wonderful views of Signal Mountain and uh, of uh, Jenny Lake and and in all of it. It was just. A, a gorgeous experience that I will never forget seeing that park in the winter. Not a whole lot you can do in that park in the winter. All the visitor centers are closed. Uh, the trails are not going to be shoveled or anything. And the snow is like 200 inches deep. So you're going to have to put some skis or, or some snowshoes on if you want to get into the park um, other than just driving around it. But it was a, it was a great day and a, and a great drive, beautiful skies, uh, beautiful temperatures the whole time. And then we skied at, at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort, of course, and uh, had a wonderful time there. But the town of Jackson itself is one of those cool sort of touristy mountain towns where they have just some awesome shops, some awesome people that work there, some some really interesting and fun restaurants, and everything is walkable. And I just loved it. And I can't wait to get my whole family back there. We'll take the RV and, and visit Yellowstone again and then go to Grand Teton National Park and Stay in Jackson. Yeah, the photos that you sent back were stunning. It looked beautiful. What is in your black tank this week? Daylight saving time. Oh, I hate oh. it. I think I complain about this every single year. Also, having it in the middle of vacation, thanks a wow. lot. Wow. Well, I know. And then you had to jump another time zone and come yeah. back. Yeah, I hate it. I was horribly impacted by it this year. That first, that like Sunday into Monday... I that was the worst night of sleep I have ever had, and I had been rocking the sleep. I mean, I missed you. There's no joke, but I moved myself to the middle of that king size bed, and I got back into old like single living on my own days where I didn't make the bed because I just left all the pillows in the perfect spot that I had just been in so that when I would come back later, I just melt back right down into where I left off. So I was very angry at daylight saving time for taking from me my last solo night in that king size bed before you came home, even though I was so happy to have you home. And so I hate it. I don't understand why we do it. I just wish it would stop. It just was the worst. 
All right. What's in your fresh tank? <laughs> uh, so my fresh tank is actually, I've talked a lot about uh, the roastery. It's a Kansas City based coffee company. I friggin' love them. I've talked numerous times. Obviously, you know, the holiday blend. You cannot go a season without the holiday blend from the roastery. But now that we are stationary for a little bit longer periods of time, I became a subscriber of uh, their coffee subscription that they have. And it is a it's a fantastic deal. I think if anyone um, has priced, you know, one of the things we loved to do on the road is to check out local coffee I'm roasters. I'm about this all now. I oh, you didn't know idea. anything about this? Where do, you, where do you think that delicious coffee comes from every morning, I thought morning, you Jason bought Efferson? coffee at the grocery store like everybody else oh, in the world. Oh, please. You no, have, we would always be out of it. shipped from Kansas City. I yes, see. yes. And because if I bought it on the regular, we'd always be out of it. Um, and I really like this particular <laughs> blend. But on the road... Buying coffee, really well-sourced quality coffee can sometimes be rather expensive. I mean, I'm talking sometimes like $20 yeah. for not even a pound. It's usually 12 ounces. So the subscription that I do is I we get three bags sent once a month, and it costs $15 a bag. And so $45 a month. Listen, you know how many lattes that is at Starbucks? That's like That's like three at this point, okay? So I'm just saying, just, if you, I know that Folgers is making a real strong push right now to remind <laughs> all of us that Folgers is there. Don't think I didn't see you at the Super Bowl. They are making a real strong run for it to remind us that Folgers is still, you know, a viable option. If you are looking for a really well sourced, curated, delicious cup of coffee, I get the Betty recipe and you want it at an affordable price point, I do think that it is worth $15 a bag free shipping. It comes right to the house once a month. I don't have to think about it. I cannot recommend the roastery for this subscription. I've priced out other coffee subscriptions. If you had asked me how much a bag of coffee was, I would say $5, $6. There are bags of coffee that are 5 or $6 that are out there. Oh. They're called Folgers. <laughs> I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with I, that coffee. I, I, there's, you, like, there's nothing wrong with that I'm not, Mountain Valley or Mountain Green, whatever green that mountain. That's good. I like that. You know, I would argue that I don't, I don't even like the Joffrey's like Lavazza. Disney. Lavazza is my, my favorite. I think Lavazza is really nice if you want to make like an espresso or something. You we know why I like not, it? Why? Because we had it on our honeymoon, and that's what I remember the flavor from. I don't remember drinking coffee on our honeymoon. That's what was in the hotel. Oh, no, you make me feel like I got to go buy that now. Look, I just saved us to. $30 a month. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't. You think you're so cute. Um, <laughs> but if if this is a thing that you like to set a little extra aside, and I really like supporting a the Kansas, I really like the roastery. I like their mission. Uh, I like supporting them. I've not really been able to find a local roaster here. I prefer to support local roasters. I've not been able to find a local roaster here. We're gonna, we're gonna find you one. I, I've been to all of them, so oh, okay. that's why we now have a subscription to the roastery because I tried, I tried. Uh, we're only on our second month with them, so clearly I tried. <laughs> but I would like to recommend that if if you're looking for something that you want to come to your house and that you want to curate the different uh, types of coffee you try, I highly recommend the roastery. That's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are enjoying RV Miles and you want to head over to Apple Podcasts and leave RV Miles a five-star review, we would greatly appreciate that your review is helping put RV Miles in front of a whole new generation of listeners. So thank you to the over 1,200 of you that have already done that. Just another reminder that Homecoming October 9th through the 13th is going on sale April 1st for Mile Marker members, April 15th for the general public. So keep an eye out on that uh, through our mailing list or across our social medias. But until then, stay healthy, drink good coffee, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.